What up guys, this is Ameritrash Telemarketer here and I'm gonna make another video tonight. This one is bigger than telemark skiing. Uh, I'm gonna to attempt to define what backcountry skiing is. Now, this is gonna unleash, I'm sure, a shit storm of internet trolls, but um, backcountry skiing to me is one of those things kind of like organic where like everyone uses this word but they don't really know what it means and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people and then a lot of people are like scared of backcountry skiing because of the way the word is used and uh, so I'm going to attempt to define what backcountry skiing is and then kind of elaborate on why it's controversial. So for me backcountry skiing is any type of skiing that is done off the resort. Um, that's huge. I mean that can encompass um, a lot of skiing. I mean, if you think about it, that can encompass like Nordic skiing um, that isn't groomed. Uh, that can uh, encompass, you know, ski touring um, through, you know, just hiking trails, like riding single track through the woods. Um, that can encompass skiing through glades. Um, and it also can encompass ski mountaineering. Um, and I don't mean ski mo as like a discipline. I mean, ski mountaineering is in people who go and climb peaks and then, you know, ski down the peaks. That's also backcountry skiing. It's like a facet of backcountry skiing. Um, and, you know, anything in between. So it's essentially backcountry skiing to me is gonna be um, skiing that's done outside of resorts that isn't uh, patrolled um, and uh, maintained. Um, and now, once you get into the whole human tr power thing, that opens up a whole nother can of worms because you can go out with a sled and sled ski and that's backcountry skiing, but that's a lot different than like ski touring, which is also backcountry skiing. So, you know, backcountry is just one of those words that like you go into a store and you're like, I want to get into backcountry skiing. And they're like, yep, we hear that every day and we're going to sell you uh, equipment on it. And then, you know, when you live out west, like especially in Colorado, but you know anywhere out west, and and even in the east a little bit, but less so in the east. Now you have avalanches, and so you know everyone's like, oh, don't go in the backcountry because of the avalanches. It's really dangerous, and I mean that's true, but I think people are kind of missing the point here. Is that you know going in the backcountry is more dangerous than the resort because you don't have you know a twenty a ski patrol ready to just come rescue you if you get hurt. Um, just like if you were going snowshoeing in the winter, I mean, that is also dangerous because if you get hurt, then like you, it's cold and an unforgiving environment and, um, you're going to have to wait for search and rescue. And in the winter time, depending on where you are, that could take a long time. So, you know, when we look at backcountry skiing, I think it shouldn't be that scary where everyone's like, don't go in the backcountry because if you're taught avalanche safety, then you can pick your terrain and just stay in terrain that is relatively safe. Um, you know, you should be an expert skier or at least an, uh, an advanced skier. I would say before I would, if I was teaching someone skiing, before I would take them in the backcountry, I would think that they would be at least ready to ski like a, a gladed diamond, if not a double diamond. Um, you know, unless you're going someplace that is really has open rolling terrain. So it's, it's really hard to generalize these things, but, um, I think we should think about backcountry skiing and, and make it a little bit more accessible to people because I think all these, all this, uh, avalanche awareness stuff has made people like really scared of the backcountry to the point where, um, they're, they're so scared to do it that they're not doing it and, and they should be able to do it, um, you know, more if they're, if they're willing to, if they're the type of person that would go for a hike in the summer, I think if you pick uh, terrain properly, um, then just about everybody with proficient skiing skills can really enjoy the backcountry, and they shouldn't just be, you know, we shouldn't be brow beating, beating people about uh, avalanches to the point where they're afraid that as soon as they get out of their car, they're going to get hit by an avalanche, you know? Um, I mean, having said that, if you are getting into backcountry skiing, I recommend that you take, um, you know, a, a one day Abbey course so that, you know, cause the problem is, and the reason why people get into trouble, well, there's a couple reasons. I mean, 
first off, ski movies, you know, everybody watches ski movies, and they don't realize that when you watch a ski movie, that a lot of these things are shot over the course of several months, um, or at least a few weeks. So, you know, like if they're filming, they're going to they're gonna wait until the conditions are just right. And then, you know, people get out on a ski vacation, and they're like, oh man, this is like a ski movie, and they see an avalanche shoot, which is amazing skiing, um, you know, or color. And then they, they get into it and they don't pay attention that, you know, the Abbey Danger is high that day or they don't have, um, you know, avalanche equipment. Um, so maybe that's to blame. Um, but I think, I think if you can identify what avalanche terrain looks like, um, then the key to just safely backcountry skiing is just going to be to avoid avalanche danger um, altogether. Now, there's probably going to be some crusty avalanche teacher out there that's like you can have an avalanche and you know 30 feet and you know yeah like you could have a little slide you know but it's unlikely that that's going to kill somebody what they need to be looking out for is you know large slides and where they are like if they're underneath the slide so but that doesn't that's not that hard to to um learn that information and if you ski in the trees and you stay, um, you know, in, in, in relatively lower elevations and in tighter trees or just are skiing a single track, your chances of getting into an avalanche is basically like none. So you just have to be cognizant that as the terrain opens up and, and gets steep, that avalanches can happen. Um, so unfortunately, I think at least in Colorado, I see a lot of people who are so scared of the backcountry, and there's no, there's no real reason for it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm interested in the community's thoughts about this, as far as what they think backcountry skiing is, and I think, um, I think more people should be enjoying the backcountry um, because it's not as dangerous as people make it out to be, but it is also dangerous and. The avalanche danger to me is actually probably not the greatest danger based on my route finding. Like, I go out and ski with my dog a lot, and honestly, I'm probably more likely to, like, you know, hit a tree or, uh, you know, just fall into a creek. <laughs> you know, I mean, these are all hazards in the winter that need to be identified. Um, but we don't want to discourage people from going out on, you know, popular single track trails. And if they're proficient enough skiers to to ski those they shouldn't be so you know scared of avalanches that they don't do that um but what they should be scared of is the cold because i see a lot of people the same the same group of people who is like they're they're hyper scared of avalanches but they don't seem to be carrying uh enough equipment to stay the night um so i would say if you're getting into backcountry skiing um, before you buy an avalanche beacon pro and shovel, um, as long as you're sticking to, uh, you know, very low terrain, I mean, you, you should buy those things, but you should, you should be, um, also thinking about making sure that you have a puffy and, um, I really love puffy pants. Um, so like you should, you should think that, okay, if I'm broken and I cannot get out, that the people that are going to get here to rescue me may not be here until the next morning. And that if you have like a broken tib fib or something, that you don't need to be hypothermic by the time they get there because you're already going to be in shock. So, you know, I'm always the guy when I'm out in the backcountry that carries a little bit bigger pack and I carry a nice big puffy and I carry puffy pants. Um, and uh, and I also carry, nowadays I've been using a, um, a uh, Garmin inReach because, you know, back in the day, um, I remember I was uh, in the slack country in Steamboat and I got cliffed out at like, you know, this was before, you know, back when cell phones, well, the cell phone didn't reach, but it was like flip phone status. And I remember I got cliffed out and, um, in the Canyon and, uh, I get to this spot and I'm like, man, I, I don't know. Um, and, and this is a good segue into what slack country is in a second, but I get to this spot and I'm like, man, like I got to do like a 30 foot drop here. And I'm like, kind of scared that if I like hit a rock or something that I'm going to be like really hurt because no one was going to come out. It's like four o'clock. So they had shut the lifts down because I was, you know, smoking weed in the, at the top in the igloo. But, um, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, 
I'm going to have to do this. And so I, I remember I, uh, I kind of slid down as much as I could. And then I popped my skis off and I started down climbing like rock climbing style. And then I uh, jumped into the snow and the snow landed up to like my, my nipples. And um, it started like sliding. And I was like, oh my fucking God, I thought I was going to die. And it slid like 10 feet. And then I was like, you know, maybe if I'm going backcountry skiing and I'm going to be, you know, skiing steep terrain like this, I should have a partner. And it, it wasn't really because of avalanche. It was because, you know, if, if I had seriously broken my myself, if I hit a rock or something and I couldn't move, uh, there's no help coming for overnight. And just surviving the night in the winter is is probably equally or as dangerous as um you know getting caught in an avalanche but i think the next thing i'll talk about before we're done is uh slack country skiing and you know what what is slack country skiing because that's a that's a term i like to use a lot because for a while before i got these majors i i identified as a slack country skier because what i was telling people is i don't really like hiking but i like the freedom the off-piste as the europeans would say affords me um but so slack country skiing to me is typically um, done off of the resort. Uh, so you're going to be using some of the, um, some sort of, whether it be a lift or a snowmobile or uh, hitchhiking um, or, you know, anything other than just pure human uh, power to, uh, to gain your elevation but you're, you're not in the resort. So there's a lot of places, like Steamboat is one of them, which has amazing slack country. So you, you take the lift up and then you hike a little bit and then you go out a gate into the National Forest. There's a lot of resorts like that in Colorado that have good slack country skiing. Um, and slack country skiing, I would say, uh, <clears throat> you have the potential to get in, in over your head pretty quick. Uh, so if you're gonna go in the slack country, I would definitely buddy up. And um, I wouldn't just follow people's tracks because people do crazy shit. So like, you don't know like if there's mandatory air and there's a lot of places where mandatory air is like a thing that if you're just, you know, you're like, wow, these, the tracks are petering out, but these two tracks go out in this amazing powder. I'm gonna follow those. I mean, that's how I got clipped out is you're like, oh, I'm following these tracks and this is amazing powder because nobody skied it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay. I see why no one skied this. Um, so like, I've definitely, I've been like clipped out at Kicking Horse. Um, I've been face first in a tree well where my friends had to unclip me back when we didn't have releasable binding. So literally someone had to like assist me out of the tree well. Um, I told you like one clipped out story. Um, I have like gave myself a concussion. I've broken my fibula numerous times um, before we had releasable bindings. Uh, you know, backcountry skiing is dangerous, but it's not necessarily dangerous because of avalanches. Um, so, you know, I encourage you guys to do backcountry skiing, um, and also slack country skiing, but I also encourage you guys to take a Avi, um, Avi one, I think used to be like two or three days, but now they're doing this one course and it's basically just a crash course for like, this is what avalanche terrain looks like and stay away from it. But um, if you hike, think about all the places where there's like tight trees and it's relatively low angle. You could bring your dog and, and think about it more as like hiking where um, you hike, but then on the way down, it's like a easy, you know, it's a, a more fun way of getting down as opposed to what everyone thinks about backcountry skiing is they're going to go ski some gnarly peak, you know, like what Cody Townsend's are doing some insane, like just, you know, take your dog and go enjoy the the um yeah, the single track just go for a hike and, and that's backcountry skiing um and it should be more accessible to everybody and then as you progress through that you know continue your, your avi education always be mindful of you know like how dangerous it is to stay the night over and um and then you know ratchet up your your steepness and your your avalanche risk as you have more education where you can identify the terrain um, so yeah, guys, that's the video for tonight. Uh, this is what I think backcountry skiing is. I think everybody should do it and, um, try to be nice to each other out there. Like when you see people backcountry skiing, um, you know, buddy up with each other because, um, there is actually a safety and numbers component to that, but I'm going to make that for another video. Um, because I don't know what the deal is, but like skiers, backcountry skiers can be pretty, 
like standoffish and aloof. I'm not saying all of them are like this, but like um, I come from like a whitewater community and everyone's pretty like friendly and they, they realize that if you're drowning in the river that it's nice to have extra people to try to save you. But in backcountry skiing, you'll see like two people all the time. You're like these two guys that are like, we're uber cool. And you're like, hey guys, what up? And they're like, hey. And then you're like, can I buddy up with you? And they're like, well, I don't, I don't know if you, uh, if you know what you're doing, man. This is dangerous. And you're like, well, yeah, I do know it's dangerous. And that's why I'm offering to buddy up with you. Fortunately, usually when that happens, very rarely can I not keep up. But, um, you know, some people are like, just, I don't know why they're standoffish. Just, so be nice to each other and uh, get stoked for the season and um, have a great night.